Hi there, you've bought DayZ and you need some help, that's why you're here, so let's get straight into it. I'm going to click change servers and you want to go to official and then you want to find a low populated server. So to do that, you just click on the players icon at the top here and then you find something with a decent ping and you're away. You can just join that server. 100 ping, 4 people, perfect. Another thing to do is change the field of view. So you go to this icon at the top here, click that, get the field of view slider bar and take it all the way to the right and you click apply just here and then we can have a look exactly how that changes things in game so this is the default field of view we've put those two trees there one left one right and let's just open the settings up and change the field for widen the field of view you can see as we increase it how much more peripheral vision we get left and right apply that and you can see it onto the right there and the left so much more vision, so much easier to see players. That's what I suggest anyway, up to you though. All right, let's jump on a server for the first time as a fresh spawn. First thing of note is when you spawn in, you will face north. And as we spin round here, we can see the seas behind us. And that means if we put the sea to our left, we'll be facing west. And we put the sea to our right, we'll be facing east. And you can see the sun there. That means that it's morning time because the sun rises in the east. First thing to cover are zombies. Throw your blocks, right button, move backwards, and they'll not be able to hit you once you do that. They can come around the back and hit you if you're blocking like this. You have to face them and block. Now, how do you kill a zombie? Wait for it to attack twice, power hit. For it to attack again, it'll attack twice, power hit. Block, attack twice, power hit. You see, I was aiming about up here somewhere. You don't aim for their faces, you aim above them because the hitbox is a little bit broken. Zombies are really good for supplies. Initially, when you spawn in on DayZ, a lot of the places are going to be looted up because everyone else is spawning in at the same spot. Some more zombies down there. I'll go into a bit more detail with them. The way to block, as I was just saying there, might have been difficult to hear because of the zombie. Right click brings the mouse. Bring, let's get rid of that. Right click, brings your fists up, move backwards, blocks. Normal attack, left mouse, power attack, shift, left mouse. The shift, left mouse, power attack, knocks the zombie back. One, two, bang. You follow this very simple guide of how to deal with zombies one on one. And as I say, you should never get hit by them. Oh my god, we've got a knife. Which leads me perfectly on to stealth attacks. Okay, stealth attacks. Let's have a look in the bottom left hand corner where I'm circling the cursor there. You can see there's a little marker. As you crouch walk along, it's a single bar. If you crouch walk a bit faster, or just jog, it's two. And as soon as you start running, it's three. You kind of get used to these values without having to look and refer to that. To know exactly how much sound you're making. Zombies work mainly off sound, but they do work off line of sight as well. Now we're gonna we're gonna look at doing a um, a stealth kill on one if we can. Two ways of doing this: you either move slowly, so there's only one bar showing in the bottom corner here. This is probably the safest way of doing it. Crouch, walk behind the zombie, when you get to about this distance. Right, look at the distance. How far away I am from the zombie. He would have fallen forward a little bit. But that's how you do the stealth kill. It's got some goodies for us as well. So I showed you the slow movement. Now let's try the fast crouch walk approach. So you walk in and then you crouch walk in with left shift. Might not work because of the ground we're on, but we'll give it a try. Yep, it worked. And again, there's the distance. So what I'm doing here is I'm crouch walking. How many buttons are we using here? Uh, my buttons should be the same as yours, hopefully. So C to crouch. Left shift to move fast. And then when I come up behind the zombie, all I'm doing is pressing right click, left click. As one, pretty much. There's another nifty little thing that you can do with zombies, and it, it's not necessarily something that I would suggest you do on a highly populated server, um, especially if you're in the spawn areas, because there's going to be a lot of people around. But if you alert a zombie, you can do it by talking to them. Hello? Hello? 
That noise she made is the first phase of the aggro. If you go prone like this, and they haven't started screaming, then you can actually de-aggro them. They might path towards you, and if they get line of sight of you, they could aggro. But they could just as easily turn and go the other way. We'll see how this one plays. But this zombie's now not interested in me. It'll only be interested if it sees me. Here you go, off it wanders. Hello? Hello? Zombie! Oh, you fat cow. Oh, dear. <laughs> Just didn't like that. There's some places you can cheese zombies. And if you've got this many, then it might be worth it. Uh, another place to cheese. Climb up on the car. They can't attack you. When you swing at a zombie, the momentum takes you forward. You can see here. If I just keep on clicking, I'll end up off the car and on top of the zombie and it will be able to hit me. So, every now and again, just back up. Right. I say when you spawn and you're in your spawn town, your priorities are water. Or your priority. Your first priority is water. Um, and to try and find a knife. We've already found the knife, so water... These wells here are the only places that you're 100% guaranteed to get clean water. If you find a bottle that's half full, it's a very good chance it's going to give you some sort of nasty disease. So you don't want to be drinking that. You want to empty it out and fill it up at one of these wells. They're dotted around all the major cities and a lot of the smaller villages as well, and towns. So when you fill it up with the water, you can see in the bottom right hand, there's a funny symbol turned up next to the water bottle. That means that the stomach's full. It doesn't mean to say you have to finish right there and then drinking. You, it tells you, it's telling you the stomach's getting full. So another five or six spins on this thing and you should be fine. But just bear in mind that, that you overdo it and you get reset basically because you're going to throw up and you're going to have to start all over again. You can hear my characters shivering because I'm walking around this place in a pair of shorts and a t-shirt and uh, it's the middle of winter, probably. So another thing you need to be looking for are better clothing, but we'll cover that later on. One of the things there, you can see that the temperature's blue and that means I'm shivering. And as I continue to shiver, there's a chance I'll get a cold. As you go inside buildings, it actually alters your temperature as well, so you can keep warm that way. And I've just found a crossbow. That is a right result. Now, if you are struggling a little bit for food, you can find them at the bottom of these trees. Sometimes the stuff is rotten. You can eat rotten fruit and vegetables, just be a bit careful. In the bottom right there, you'll see the bloated symbols come up, and that is one of the dangers. It can it can make you throw up because you get bloated. And don't eat them back to back, like have one rotten piece of fruit and then give it a little while. Now the fruit spawns, if I was to sit here for 10 minutes, the fruit would start spawning on all these trees. Along with stones on railroad tracks and on trails. It's, it's, it, they spawn in based on player activity and player locality, so if someone's around, then fruit and veg will spawn. So you've always got a guaranteed way of getting fruit if you need to. You know, finding this crossbow early on is just like crazy good because it is the best zombie killer in the game. I don't actually carry on taking these further into the game. I tend to only use them maybe for the first hour, hour and a half, two hours, and then once I've got a suppressed pistol, it goes out the window. Oh, look, oh, another apple. These, as I say, have all spawned in because I've been wandering around here. Right, okay. So we don't know where we are, but we're right on the edge of a city. That much is obvious, because there's a big, huge, great big set of buildings in front of us. And on the exit and entrance to every single city and town, and some villages, so long as they're not too small, you will find a signpost. You can put those letters into I Survive, and I'll link it down below into the website on I, into the little box on I Survive's website, and you use what you would class as the English version of these letters. So Y E P H O R O P C K. This one's quite quite easy, quite straightforward. Some of them are a little bit more um, obscure. You type that into into the I Survive site, and it will tell you exactly whereabouts you are in English and then it will point it on the map and then you can work out from there whereabouts you want to go. I would suggest on a populated server you 
don't tend to want to stick around where you spawn for too long. Firstly, the way that daisy spawns work is that everyone spawns in a big cluster. So if 10 people are joining the server or 10 people have died, there will be 10 people joining in their very close proximity to where you are. So that the, the people are going to be likely to be aggressive. They're going to punch your lips out. They're going to want all the food that you've, you, you want, all the supplies that you want. Uh, everything's going to be in short supply. So you just get out. Get away. Get the uh, get the get yourself a drink if you can. A knife would be even better. Second second prize. So talking of knives being so important, if you've not managed to find anything, and and the best place to find them are in industrial buildings. So that big long shed, that barn over there. Oh, let me put that the other way. That big long <laughs> that long barn or that shed over there. Or garages that shed in the distance any of the outbuildings tend to be a good place they'll, they'll also spawn in um, residential but industrials as they call them is, is, is probably a better place to look now along with fruit on these train tracks and also on um, trails stones spawn there we go we've got a stone if you were lucky enough to find two, you just combine them and you can make, make yourself a stone knife. Now, if you can't find two, then what you need to do is find a rock placement like this. I think this will do. Craft a stone knife. One stone, one big rock. You get the option to craft it. It'll dump it on the floor for you, so make sure you pick it up. And there is your lifeline to survival, a stone knife. So much can be done with a with a knife and so little Oh hold on a minute. Do you hear that cock a cock a cock a doodle do? <laughs> there's some big cocks in Cherno. I know where we are because I kinda know the map. Yes, we're in Cherno and there's a cock. Where is it? Oh So what do we want with this thing? This rooster. Shall we call it a rooster instead of a cock? I can't fit this cock in my pants. I could if I ate. Now, if you've been looking around and, and reading uh, uh, guides, maybe you have because you're here. Wanting to know stuff. It may be that someone has said something about when you hear a cockerel going cock a doodle do, there's a player nearby. Um, don't believe it. It's the biggest load of bollocks I've ever heard in my life. There's also another one that these trees... Oh. These trees... Uh, stand by, we'll just kill this zombie. Remember? One, two, bang. Bang. Backpack. Lovely. Your services have been marvellous. We're gonna get this. We're gonna get this uh, chicken, and we're gonna cut it up. Right. First thing to notice is there's some stuff on here. We've got some feathers. We're gonna take those. We'll talk about those in a bit. We've got some food, and we've ruined our steak knife. So that's that's useless now. You should never really ruin a steak knife because you'll be able to find stuff to repair them with. But we've got a replacement knife here. And with these bones, look in the bottom left hand corner, craft bone knife. Now, I suppose you could say the daft thing is you can't gut a chicken or a rooster without a knife to be able to get the bones to make the knife. But often you will find that people have killed survivors and there's a pile of bones along with a load of human flesh around. Pick the bones up, run off into the, into the trees with your bones and go and make yourself a knife. Another way to get a knife if you can't find one. Look at all this stuff that we've got. Just whilst I've been wandering around talking. Now, let's have an apple. Hold on. Look at the state of my hands. If I eat this apple, I will get 
probably one of the nastiest diseases in DayZ. So I'm not going to do that. Even though it would probably work quite well on a tutorial to show you how to get rid of it, that is going to come later in, in a guide on medicals. This is a very basic let's get started guide. So we're going to have to go and find somewhere to wash our hands. You know what I should have said? I should have really, because I'd looted these in advance of cutting that chicken up, if you've got some rags, I got these rags off a zombie, which was kind of fortunate. Normally to get rags, you need a knife and then you will be cutting up some clothing to get rags. Um, but I got them off, as, off a zombie and you see in the bottom left hand corner here, just look over here in the bottom left, craft improvised hand wrappings, craft armband, eye patch, leg wrappings, torso wrappings, face wrappings or feet wrappings. The only thing really here that's any use on Chinaris are the hand wrappings. So we've crafted those up, slipped them on, watch what happens to my hands. Magically, not only do I get clean hands, they're no longer blooded. So any future preparation of animals, gut gutting of animals, will keep my hands clean. There won't be any blood on them. E even though, you know, you can see there, they're, they're, they're fingerless and they're not really... Let's forget about that. It doesn't matter. Any form of hand coverings that you've got will s stop the problem we were just discussing about having blooded hands and eating with them. So now I can just go ahead and eat this pear. It won't be any problem whatsoever. Just to cover it off, if you do want to clean your hands, you've got blood on them, you can use any open water source or a well or even a water bottle. Now then, let's have a quick look at this crossbow. The crossbow as I was just saying, is such a good zombie killer. I feel like we've covered zombie melee. Let's uh, let's get a crossbow anyway. So you go up to a, a bush like this, gather yourself a stick, put it in your hands, you've got the option to split it down. So we've got three short sticks. If you drag your knife over the sticks, you've got the option to craft bolts. Just hold the button down. It'll do all three. Three bolts are over there. Feathers, combine. Add the feathers, hold the button down again. I'll just do two. Because I want to show you something. Oh, I've done, I've, yeah, I've done one. So I've got two normal and one with, a fe uh, one with a feather. Let's see if I can show you the advantage of having the feather. Load the one without the feather first. I'm going to try and hit that lamp post. Uh, nowhere near. I don't know where it went. Right mouse brings the weapon up and they hold left control and that will give you a little bit of zoom and hold breath as well. Keep things steady. Bang. Hit the lamp post. So the difference is that you won't... Let's see if we can find... Oh, look, it's there. I mean, it, was, it wasn't far off, was it? It's just gone to the side slightly. The accuracy on the left and right with feathers, without without feathers, it can... it can for, Like, if I was shooting from here... Let's load that up. It'll hit it. So close quarters, it doesn't really matter, and that's what we're going to be using this this thing for. It was, we're going to be we're going to be shooting zombies. So we've got this chicken, and we need to get it cooked. You can either make a fire outside, which I wouldn't suggest, or you can make one inside a building, which I would. Now this is the sort of fireplace you want to be looking for. Let's put that crossbow away. You can fit way more onto these, so you can put the the meat into your hands and you can see the option there to place it with a left click and that's essentially built the fireplace up so you can drag all the other stuff onto it that you've got I would suggest you use these two here that will fry it and this will bake it or smoke it this will smoke it this will this will bake it or fry it right it's gonna get sorted out with some stuff to I might actually be taking that yeah we will but anyway Let's get sorted out with some stuff to uh, make a fire. We want a nice little, nice little tidy bush. Here we go. 
think we might have just aggroed a zombie. You notice to bring the crossbow out there, I pressed number one. You just drag the iPad into the hotbar at the bottom and uh, press the button that you need. I'm just going to deal with them using the crossbow now. Because we've kind of covered how to... I'll, I'll cover herding them in a little bit. But we're going to get this... We're going to get what we need for a fire. So you get a long stick from this. Break it down like we did before with the... To make the bolts. You need... You need the smaller sticks. Uh, we haven't picked up any matches yet, so we're going to have to make a fire lighter. To do that, get your stone knife, or your, any old knife, go up to a big tree. Let it spin once. And then you've got some bark. If you don't have anything to get paper with, get two of those. Because you'll need a fire lighter. Right, that's pretty much all we're going to need. Go back to where we've got the... The meat set up into the fireplace. Keep the doors closed as well. So we're going to put that into our hands and then with... I left a piece of bark behind. That was silly. We're going to create here. We've got a choice of fireplace or hand drill kit. We're going to make the hand drill kit. It's essentially if you haven't got matches or a lighter, you need this. Now I've got a box. Let's just put those sticks onto the fire. Attach them. Left click. I've got a box of ammo here we collected earlier. So if I can open this up, put those back in the inventory, take the paper to hands, and then attach it. Everything's there now to make a fire. You could also use rags. If you've had some rags. Um, use the hand drill kit. Ignite the fire. A couple of small sticks should be enough for what we've got here. And that will just do its thing now. In the meantime, I'm going to get this jacket. You can rotate things by using spacebar and it will twizzle it around inside your inventory. So that's a handy thing to know. You see me double click in here. You can also, to drop stuff, you can actually control click and it will get rid of it. Rather than dragging it away. So if you control click, control left click, you can drop stuff quickly. How are we getting on? If you leave two smoking, or actually leave two cooking, the process for those afterwards is quicker. So once these are done, it shouldn't take too long, we'll transfer these to this, this bit here, and then it actually just speeds the process up a little bit. Now, when you've got a fire and it's been raining a bit, you can actually dump your clothes by the fire. Right, how many My clothes are all dried up. So we're done there with the, fire, with the fireplace, all sorted. Right, let's get a bleed, and I'll show you the bandage me mechanism. Let's put that. Hopefully I get a bleed quick here, because I don't want to take much damage. You see the, the black lines around the, the character there when I'm getting hit? That's shock damage, and if I continue to keep getting hit, the shock damage will get so much I'll get knocked unconscious. There we go, we've got a bleed, finally. Okay, now we hit the hot bar for our bandage, which is number four. Hold the mouse down and it will fix your bleed. You have to make sure your bandages are disinfected. The ones that you spawn in with are, but if you create any from rags, then you need to disinfect them using alcohol tincture or disinfectant spray. Let me just zoom into the icons on the bottom right there. And the first one we've got is the plus symbol. This refers to your health pool. You can see we've lost a quarter of our health. The up hour means it's going back up, so we're going to regain some health. You can't do anything to regain health other than just time. That, that's how you get your health all back up. Next up, we've got the blood icon. This will drop if you get a bleed, and you'll notice that the colour of the screen changes. It goes more black and white. Either of these two, the, the first two icons drop to zero, you will die. Here we have the temperature icon. This is the player's body temperature. It ranges from hot to cold, red flashing, to red, to yellow, to white, which is normal, then to light blue, then dark blue. They all have different values. The, the flashing red and red will make you lose health, and so will dark blue. Next up, we've got the food symbol, which is denoted by the apple, and then the water symbol, which is denoted by the bottle. Those two get affected by both food and water when you consume them, as you would expect. Food and water, along with the blood and the health, have various color codes. They start from positive to negative, being white, normal, then down to yellow, red, and red flashing. 
All right, Daisy's got an in-game VoIP system, so let's just cover that a little bit. So you use, to use the VoIP, you press caps lock and hold it. You can see the icon there. And I will now be transmitting in-game. Use the up arrow or the down arrow, and it alters how far your voice will travel. That's whisper mode, and it will probably only reach that tree just there. When I get it onto number two, it will reach that tree just there. And number three is shout, and it will probably reach that tree over there. I don't know exactly the ranges, but you get the idea. To double tap this button, it will stay on all the time, and I'll be talking in the game <laughs> and annoying the hell out of everybody. So I'll turn that off. I can see the clothes I've got now have helped my temperature. Oops. Oh, I completely missed that shot. I'm down to my last arrow here. Or last bolt. Unless I can find it. I don't think I'll bother. We'll be alright. Um, clothes, yeah. Let's have a quick look at the clothing. You can see there in the top right it says high insulation. The trousers that I spawned with are bad insulation. Bad. Bad. Low. Bad. But it's enough to keep me out of the blue. So we're, all, we're, we're doing okay. I would suggest you don't really worry too much about that. Probably better to be um, neutral colours than bright pinks and purples but you know that's that's completely up to you you play it how you want to play it if you want to go out in a purple dress and a pair of leather riding boots who's who am i to say you're not to do that i tell you what i should show you there is there isn't a, a way to actually swipe the zombies away if you've got a weapon in your hands like a like a gun or a crossbow as we've got here so this one's going to come at me. I hold the weapon up using right mouse, then press F, and it it knocks them back. Actually puts them into a oh that's my last bolt I think. It actually puts them into a, a stagger animation that's that's scripted, and after a bit of time you can actually work out where to shoot them in the head. Just be a bit careful using this though, because it does damage the weapon that you're using. So if you've got a badly damaged gun, it could make it ruined. I probably should knock up some more, some more bolts. I also ought to tell you, whilst I'm doing this, that I stream this. I've got so many hours in DayZ, so any questions that you've got, you can either chuck them in the comments below. Let's make these bolts. I stream five days a week on YouTube and on Twitch. If you want to jump into the chat and you've got any questions, you're, you're starting out and you're a little bit confused about certain things or I haven't covered them in enough detail, just drop in. If I am if I can't answer the question, then the people in the chat of it will be able to. So you see me automatically loading these bolts up and you're probably wondering, how's he doing that? Well, you either put them on the hotbar and hold the hotbar key. So we'll put them on number two. I can hold number two and it will load it. If I want to take that bolt out of the crossbow, I just press R once. And it takes it out. If I want to reload it, I hold R. If I don't want to use the hotbar down here. It's pretty much how it works for all weapons. Right, I'm going to have a wander around, try and find some uh, repair kits, and I'm going to explain how they work once I've got them. Right, here we go. I've looted the police station and got loads of stuff. Doesn't always happen, I have to say. So what we're going to cover first. We've got a stab vest, but it's badly damaged. You can either repair it with a leather sewing kit. That boy, there. Or you can repair it with epoxy putty. The leather sewing kit has better utility, so if you've got both, the epoxy putty is the best thing to use. You just drag it over, left click, hold it down. I think it was badly damaged. Yeah. So, it goes from ruined. Let's go from the top, actually. It goes to pristine, to worn, to damaged, to badly damaged, to ruined. Once an item is ruined, it is no use whatsoever. Just throw it on the floor. So, I'm going to have to do this twice to get it back to worn. You can't get it up to pristine. As best you can do is up back up to worn. 
So we've now got a stab vest that's in reasonable shape. What else is damaged here? Our jacket is damaged. You know, the best way of doing this actually is to put the repair kit in your hands and then drag the item to the repair kit. And then you don't lose the value of the item that you're wearing. So if someone came along and shot me while I had that stab, stab vest in my hands, it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't apply any protection for me. Whereas if I was to hold that in my hands and do that, it would stay on the, on the character. So it's the best way. And also the, the insulation value of this will remain in place. Whereas if I put it in my hands, I lose the insulation value. Um, you can actually repair this crossbow with the poxy putty as well. Yeah. So we'll do that. So sewing kits are mainly for clothing. The leather sewing kit and the standard sewing kit. Epoxy putty will repair armor and the crossbow. And it'll do a few other repairs as well. But you just drag it over an item and it'll tell you whether or not it's going to fix it. And we've got a gun cleaning kit here. Which will fix guns and also magazines. That's got that Glock up to good, into good shape. What are the magazines like? They're all damaged. So we take the least damaged one, which is this one, and repair that one. You only get four goes with these, the gun cleaning kits, and they're actually quite hard to find. The reason for repairing guns and magazines is if you don't, there's a greater chance the gun will jam. So we fix that up. So we've got one magazine and one gun, but we've got bullets spread around all over these ones. That's a badly damaged magazine, so put it into your hands. In the left-hand corner, it says empty magazine, hold left mouse. This will take a bullet out per, per spin. And once it's empty, we're going to discard this magazine because we don't need it, because it's damaged, badly damaged. Hold the new one that we've just repaired into your hands and hold R and it will load it back up one by one. Okay, we've got that done. We'll put that into our inventory. To save confusion, I'm going to take the two other ones out of my inventory so we've only got one in there. Put the gun in my hands and drag a single round into the chamber. I can either drag this magazine and it will load, or I can hold R. That is ready to go. Probably shouldn't have done that. Now I'm going to take back these two magazines because I want to keep them. I want to keep my kits and I'll put the shotgun in my hands. Same thing uh, with a shotgun. You shoot once, press once, and it will cycle another one through. Hold it down. And it will load more. Um, I don't know why zombies aren't coming all over me, but uh, not literally, obviously. So we hold R down. And we're getting some more put through the, the guts of the gun. Let's not forget that. And finally, we've got the electrical repair kit. That'll put your scopes into good shape. So if you look at this scope, it's badly damaged. It's very difficult to see through. You can see all the glass is damaged. So we bring the electrical repair kit over and we can give it a quick touch up with this. And that makes it damaged. It doesn't actually look any different when it's damaged, just to badly damaged. So we need another go on it. And then we're all cushy. Nice looking scope. Uh, water purification. So you, you've found some tablets and you're not quite sure what they do. Water purification tablets. Any water that you find in DayZ is not safe to drink. I mean, it can be. If you've got no choice, then drink it. But they look alright state, don't they? But they're damaged. So when you find a bottle of water in DayZ, you should really empty it out. But it, if you've got purification tablets, you can just drag them over the top of the water and purify them. Or purify it, the water that is. One tablet works on any quantity. So if this bottle's only half full, it'll work full. If you've got a bigger container, if you've got a jerry can full of water that you've taken out of a stream, 
one single tablet will clean it. And then it's safe to drink. And one of the final things that I didn't mention for repairing stuff are handily sharpening stones that spawn inside these outside toilets quite often, along with knives actually. So you can drag your knife over the sharpening stone and bring it back to life. And they really are handy things to have carry around these sharpening stones because your knives, your knife gets a lot of use. I've got a lot of knives actually, which I don't really need to, I don't need to be carrying all this lot, but you know, I am. And I, like I said there, I've got lots of stuff here, but I think the, the main thing for when you're starting out with Daisy is just carry everything, just pick everything up. I don't mean like batteries and battery chargers and every single melee weapon, but I mean ammo. You don't know where you're going to end up. You don't know which particular path you're going to go down because you don't know what you're going to get. So get yourself good containers, good size clothing that can take a lot of stuff and just hoard it all until you until you know where you're going to be. And one of the side issues with that is, is as you carry more and more stuff, your stamina bar down here on the bottom left reduces. And you can see that as I run, my stamina bar is going down. If you have got a massive backpack full of batteries and all load of car stuff, and this is this is absolutely down here somewhere, you're only going to be able to sprint for a very small amount of time. And, and mobility in Daisy is, is is very important, especially if you've got a lot of zombies. <laughs> Right, shooting that gun's made uh, made for an interesting zombie herd here, or horde. Certain buildings are better than others to herd the zombies. We've got a bleed. I actually wait for them to come up the stairs here and do something a bit a bit tricky. Let them hit. Let her hit me. I want a few more up here. They get stuck on the doorways. That's the problem. So that they're not all coming in. All right, we can we can uh, call that a day. And that's herded them all up there. Not necessarily want to be doing that many. But sometimes you have no choice. There are, as I say, better buildings to be doing this in. Let's uh, see if I can find one for you. All right, we've got a few zombies on our trail. Oh no, we're out of ammo. What do we do? Well, these buildings here, these garages, are absolutely perfect for it. You just bring them in and shut the door. Let's get a couple more. I wasn't trying to kill her. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to bring her over this way along with her friends. So yeah, you can just you can just bring your fists up, um, bring them all the way in, give them a little bit of a twirl at the end, and then out you go. Close the door. The difficult bit is actually getting the spin on the door. You can you can practice this. I mean, look, I'm on yellow health. I I've done this thousands of times, and they're still getting hits on me. You're running out, you're running out, bang! Close the door. There are little tricks that you can use. There's certain buildings that are better than others, as I say. There's um, let me show you one that is particularly bad. This building here is actually really bad for herding them into because you go in here, you open this door, and you've got a door out through there. This one's often open, this one's open. And then it's just a rabbit warren of, of doors that you have to close. So just don't even, don't even try that. You want to try it somewhere. These garages are difficult because the door close icons on the outside. She's going to catch me up because I'm on yellow health. Uh, this one's not too bad. You can close that door. Wait for her to come in. As I say, the, the zombies often get stuck on the doorways. So, you see she's a little bit confused. And then just close the door and you never have a problem. And unless they change it so that zombies can get through doors, it's often easier to actually herd them and, and manage them that way than it is to, to try and to try and deal with them. I've got another place we can put this zombie. We've got one in that side. 
And we can put one in here. They get a bit confused by the bed sometimes, so you can just jump over the top. So we've got one more place we can put a zombie inside this door if we want. But that's zombie herding. T don't don't be uh, afraid to just go on and start a life and go, right, I want to try and learn how to herd zombies. I don't care about survival this particular time. I just care about working the, working the zombies. And then you can... You can work from that point forward because once you've got the zombies sorted out then you can concentrate on the more important aspects of trying to survive two more zombies we know that we know they're going to be coming as i say the, the thing is when there's more than one is if, if one gets stuck on a door it's great if they both come in together but look one's come in now and now i've got to dance with him for a little bit while the other one works out whether or not she wants to come in or what she wants to do that one actually worked quite well for me. That's how you do the herding of zombies. That's pretty much it for this first guide on Daisy. You start a guide. If you've enjoyed it or you've learned something, put a comment down below. If there's other things that you want to be covered in another guide, then let me know as well down below. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next one.